Good day, everyone. Today, we're diving into a fascinating topic that you'll find not only in your math classes but also in everyday life, inductive and deductive reasoning. These two forms of reasoning are the backbone of how we form conclusions and make decisions. By the end of this lesson, you'll not only understand these concepts but also be able to apply them in various situations, both inside and outside the classroom. Let's start with the concept of reasoning. Reasoning is essentially the process of forming clear and precise ideas to arrive at a conclusion. We all do this daily, whether we realize it or not. For example, when you decide not to bring an umbrella because the sky looks clear, you're using reasoning. But it's important to recognize that our conclusions are not always correct, especially if our reasoning is flawed. This is why understanding the different ways of reasoning is crucial to making accurate conclusions. Now, let's talk about deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning is like being a detective. You start with a general principle or theory and apply it to a specific case to draw a conclusion. This method is pretty reliable because it's based on premises that are assumed to be true. For instance, if you know that all humans are mortal, and Socrates is a human, you can deduce that Socrates is mortal. A common form of deductive reasoning is called a syllogism. This is where you take two premises and use them to arrive at a specific conclusion. To visualize deductive reasoning, we can use logical representations. Think of it like this. If A implies B, and B implies C, then A implies C. It's a step-by-step -step process that ensures our conclusion is based on solid reasoning. This is also related to the transitive property of equality in mathematics. For instance, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. These logical steps are fundamental in making sure our reasoning is sound. Let's break it down with some examples to make it clearer. Consider the statement. Premise 1, all birds have feathers. Premise 2, a sparrow is a bird. Conclusion, therefore, a sparrow has feathers. Simple, right? It's a logical chain of thought that starts broad and gets specific. Another statement, if you don't study, you will fail the exam. Now, if we know you didn't study, what can we conclude? That's right, you will fail the exam. This is deductive reasoning in action, using established premises to arrive at a conclusion. Note that we use premises to prove the conclusion to be true, not to justify it. Now, let's switch gears to inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning works the opposite way, it starts with specific observations and makes broader generalizations. For example, if every time you've seen the sun rise, it was in the east, you might conclude that the sun always rises in the east. Unlike deductive reasoning, which gives us certainty, inductive reasoning gives us probability. It's how we form hypotheses and theories based on patterns we observe. Here's a classic example of inductive reasoning, the sun has risen in the east every morning so far, so it will probably rise in the east tomorrow as well. While this seems logical based on our observations, it's still a generalization and doesn't guarantee the future will always follow the past. That's the nature of inductive reasoning, it's powerful, but not foolproof. Alright, let's put what we've learned to the test. I'm going to read a series of statements, and I want you to think about whether each one represents deductive or inductive reasoning. Number 1. The first five marbles drawn from the bag were red. Therefore, all the marbles in the bag are probably red. Answer, inductive reasoning. Number 2. All mammals have a backbone. A dog is a mammal. Therefore, a dog has a backbone. Answer, deductive reasoning. Number 3. All even numbers are divisible by 2. 16 is an even number. Therefore, 16 is divisible by 2. Answer, deductive reasoning. Number 4. Every time you water a plant, it grows. Therefore, watering plants helps them grow. Answer, inductive reasoning. Number 5. If it rains, the ground will be wet. It is raining. Therefore, the ground is wet. Answer, deductive reasoning. Number 6. Every morning, my dog barks when the mailman comes. Tomorrow, my dog will bark when the mailman comes. Answer, inductive reasoning. Number 7. All humans need oxygen to live. John is a human. Therefore, John needs oxygen to live. Answer, deductive reasoning. Number 8. 
It rained three times last week. It will likely rain again this week. Answer, inductive reasoning. Number 9. The price of gas has increased for the past month. It will likely increase again next month. Answer, inductive reasoning. Number 10. The bakery has had fresh bread every day. It will probably have fresh bread tomorrow. Answer, inductive reasoning. All right, let's dive deeper into how inductive and deductive reasoning play out in various fields. Understanding these applications will not only solidify your grasp of the concepts but also show you their real-world relevance. Examples for deductive reasoning. 1. Mathematical proofs, all even numbers greater than 2 can be expressed as the sum of two prime numbers. Goldbach's conjecture. 2. Geometry, if two angles in a triangle are equal, then the triangle is isosceles. Algebra, if x plus 3 equals 7, then x equals 4. 3. Set theory, if set A is a subset of set B, and set B is a subset of set C, then set A is a subset of set C. 4. Number theory, if a number is divisible by 4, it is also divisible by 2. 5. Calculus, the derivative of y equals x squared is y prime equals 2x. 6. Probability, if two events are independent, the probability of both occurring is the product of their individual probabilities. 7. Statistics, if a data set is normally distributed, approximately 68% of the data falls within one standard deviation of the mean. 8. Linear algebra. If two vectors are linearly dependent, one can be expressed as a scalar multiple of the other. Examples for inductive reasoning. 1. Data analysis. After observing that the sales of ice cream increase in summer months every year, one might conclude that ice cream sales are influenced by the season. 2. Pattern recognition. Noticing that a sequence of numbers increases by 2 each time, one may predict the next number in the sequence. 3. E scientific research. Observing that a particular medication reduces symptoms in several patients leads to the hypothesis that it may be effective generally. 4. Statistical inference, sampling a group of voters and finding a majority preference leads to the prediction of election outcomes. 5. Machine learning, training an algorithm on data where cats have whiskers leads the algorithm to identify new images of cats by detecting whiskers. 6. Market trends, Observing that a stock has increased in value over several months may lead to the expectation that it will continue to rise. 7. Behavioral studies. Noticing that students who attend tutoring sessions perform better on tests may infer that tutoring improves academic performance. 8. Environmental science. Recording rising global temperatures over decades suggests a trend of global warming. 9. Quality control. Finding defects in a batch of products may lead to the conclusion that the manufacturing process is flawed. 10. Educational assessment. Seeing that students who participate in study groups score higher may conclude that study groups enhance learning. By exploring these applications, you can see how versatile and essential inductive and deductive reasoning are across various disciplines. Whether you're proving a mathematical theorem or analyzing market trends, these reasoning methods provide the framework for logical and evidence-based conclusions. Now that we've explored specific examples of inductive and deductive reasoning, let's talk about how these methods integrate with other mathematical topics and fields of study. Understanding these connections will help you see the broader relevance of these reasoning methods. Let's start with logic and proof techniques. In mathematics, deductive reasoning is the foundation for constructing formal proofs. When we create a proof, we're essentially building a logical argument step by step, using deductive reasoning to ensure each step follows from the previous one. This approach is critical in verifying the truth of mathematical statements. Moving on to statistics and data analysis, inductive reasoning plays a crucial role. When we analyze data, we often begin with specific observations, like survey results or experiment outcomes, and use them to make broader inferences or predictions about a population. This process is inherently inductive, as we're generalizing from a sample to a larger group. Algebra and number theory provide fertile ground for both deductive and inductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning is used to solve equations and prove theorems, ensuring that each solution is logically sound. On the other hand, inductive reasoning comes into play when we look for patterns or test conjectures based on specific examples. In calculus, both reasoning types are also essential. Deductive reasoning underpins the derivation of calculus principles, such as finding the derivative of a function. 
We start with general rules and apply them to specific cases to obtain results. Inductive reasoning, meanwhile, helps in identifying patterns in the behavior of functions, such as noticing how a function behaves as it approaches a limit. In computer science, deductive reasoning is critical in algorithm design. When developing algorithms, we start with a problem and deduce a series of logical steps to solve it. Inductive reasoning, on the other hand, is vital in fields like machine learning, where algorithms are trained on data to recognize patterns and make predictions. Inductive and deductive reasoning are not just limited to mathematics, they have interdisciplinary applications. In science, social sciences, and even the humanities, these reasoning methods are used to analyze information, make predictions, and build arguments. Understanding how inductive and deductive reasoning integrate with other topics not only deepens your mathematical knowledge but also equips you with critical thinking skills that are applicable across disciplines. These connections are what make reasoning such a powerful tool in both academic and real-world problem-solving. As we wrap up, remember that deductive reasoning gives us certainty when our premises are true, making it a powerful tool for solving problems. On the other hand, inductive reasoning allows us to form hypotheses and theories, driving innovation and discovery. Together, these methods of reasoning help bridge the gap between abstract concepts and practical applications. In conclusion, mastering both inductive and deductive reasoning will equip you with essential tools for mathematical analysis and problem solving. These skills will not only help you excel in math but will also enhance your ability to tackle complex challenges in the modern world. So, as you continue your studies, keep practicing these forms of reasoning, and you'll find yourself becoming more confident and precise in your approach to problem solving. Thank you for watching this video on Math and Phil Tech TV. We hope you found it informative and engaging. If you enjoyed the content, please give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Hit the notification bell so you never miss an update, and share this video with your friends and fellow learners. Your support helps us continue to create great content. See you in the next video?